Hi, I'm Christy Moore, broker of Local Expert Realty, and today I want to answer the question, what are some costly mistakes to avoid when selling my home? The first mistake I think that most sellers make that they should avoid is not being properly educated on the market and how the market actually works. And the reason this is important is because if you're not properly educated on the market and how it works, it's going to be tough for you to make solid decisions that are in your best interest. So one of the things that we do when we meet with sellers is that we explain exactly what's going on in the market. So it's not just about, oh, is it a seller's market or buyer's market or how's the market? It's about more specifics of what's going on in your county, your zip code, and even all the way down to your specific neighborhood. So what we're looking for to decide what's going on in the market is inventory levels. Inventory levels will tell you the trend in the market of whether or not the market is predicting to go up or down. We're looking at absorption rates, which is how quickly does it take to absorb that inventory that's on the market. And most importantly, we're looking at what is the current trend. So um, is the inventory going up or down? Are the sales going up or down? Because in any type of investing or any type of market, the trend is your friend until it ends. So for instance, in 2007, we started to see that inventory was going up and contracts were going down. So before the market crashed, there were leading indicators in the market showing that the market was going to go down. People were just not educated on um, those indicators. So if you can see that and you can see the crystal ball of either prices going up or down, then you can decide what's actually a good offer. If the market's going up, it's better to wait it out and ride it out a little bit um, to get more offers. If the market's going down or has an indicator that it may start to go down, then it's in your best interest to accept an offer up front or if it's taking a while to get an offer to accept the first offer that comes along, which is not the same strategy you would have in a seller's market. The second mistake I see most sellers make is not properly preparing their house for sale. There are huge swings in the market. It's about 18% from the bottom of the market up to the top of the market in price. And where you fall in that 18% has a lot of different factors, but one of them is preparing your house for sale. So I see a lot of people overlook high return improvements. So for instance, we had a house on the market where we weren't getting great offers and I recommended that they paint their cabinets and upgrade their countertops to granite. It was about a $2,500 upgrade. And they ended up getting $20,000 more once we put it back on the market just for that small upgrade. So you want to look at those low cost, high dollar return items, which would not be redoing and ripping out your whole kitchen, but doing upgrades like that where it's small investment, big return. You definitely want to look at what are all the things that you can do with your property to increase your price. You also want to make sure that it's cleaned, decluttered, um, any deferred maintenance that is, uh, that is existing in your house, you want to make sure that that's all taken care of. And staging is super important. We have seen properties go for 5 to 7% more than the average in the area just because they were staged for the buyer that will be buying your house. Because a lot of times we live in our properties very differently than how we'd want to sell our properties. You know, if we still have all of our furniture from college and it was our first home, that's probably not going to appeal to the buyers that are looking to buy in your area. So staging is incredibly important to get the emotional impact that you need for buyers to fall in love with your house and pay you the best price. And the third thing that I see a lot of sellers do that is a huge mistake is not hiring the right expert. Number one, you wanna make sure that you have a great relationship with whoever you're hiring to represent you. You need to make sure that you have established trust and that you can work together personality-wise, but also you wanna make sure that they know what they're doing. They have a process that um, ensures performance, consistent performance. I read a, a quote today that said, greatness doesn't come from 
doing something well in 90 days, it comes from decades of doing things that are great. So you want to make sure that they have a long track record of success, not just a short track record of success. I mean, we've seen negotiations, even a recent one that we did um, that swung $86,000 in our seller's favor. So we've seen negotiations that can swing anywhere from fifty dollars to $100,000. So having the right expert, the right process, and a trusting relationship will help you add more to your bottom line. So if you're interested in selling your house and you'd like to set up a consultation, feel free to call, text, or email us.